Okay, class, now we're going to be looking at bonds. Uh, bonds are debt for a corporation. It's a way for them to get money to finance their business. So they can get debt through selling shares of preferred stock or common stock, or they can sell bonds. Bonds are debt, okay? So right here it says it's a promise to pay. It's like a loan, okay? Yes, a person goes out and they, we call it purchasing a bond. You can purchase a bond from a corporation. But what you're really doing is you're getting this legal document this legal paper saying that they're going to pay you back. So it's like a loan, but the, the terms are already set. And the indenture is called is the agreement that's, that puts the terms together for this, this loan or this bond agreement. Okay? Um, so advantages of bonds for corporations is that it doesn't affect the owner's uh, control at all because the bondholders are debt holders okay, versus the common shareholders. So it's not increasing the common shareholders, which a lot of times the common shareholders like that. Um, when they pay interest, that interest is tax deductible. Okay, so it's the way to finance the company. Uh, common shareholders, they get paid dividends. Dividends are not tax deductible, whereas interest here is tax deductible. Um, it can increase your return on, on equity. Okay, and the reason why it can increase your return on equity um, is because they're, they're paying a certain interest rate to these bondholders. Well, if, if the corporation can take this money in from these bondholders and invest it in, in good deals, uh, expanding their business, if they can invest it at a higher interest rate than what they're actually paying out, then what's gonna happen is it's gonna increase the return on equity. A possible disadvantage is though, if they get this money in and they don't use it wisely and their investment in this money um, is less than the current uh, interest rate that they're paying, then that can actually decrease their return on equity. Um, another disadvantage is that it pays, that you do have to pay interest, and in the future you've got to pay the par value. The par value is the, the, the amount of the bonds back to these bondholders. Okay, so it has to be repaid in the future. Whereas common stock and uh, preferred stock, well, preferred stock oftentimes is repaid, but common stock doesn't have to be repaid. Okay. It's ownership in the company. All right, let's look at an example of when we issue uh, these bonds at the par value. So let's say we have $500,000 bonds out there and we're reissuing them at, we're not reissuing, we're issuing them, we're selling them at $500,000. So it's very simple. We will get in $500,000 for these bonds, but then we've got to record a bond payable. So bond payable, $500,000. Okay? And then in the future, we'll, we will be paying that back. Let's say that this bond pays interest semi-annually, meaning every six months it will pay interest. And let's say the interest rate on these bonds is 10%. So uh, let me just write here 10% uh, times the 500,000 times, it's just it's semi-annually, so it's just for half of the year. Okay. So that would be $25,000. So we're going to have a uh, bond interest expense. I'm going to abbreviate here because I don't have a lot of room. Bond interest expense, $25,000. And then cash, because we're paying this, will be credited $25,000. So that's our journal entry for a semi-annual. So every six months, semi-annually, we will have this journal entry because we will be paying interest out uh, every six months. Right? And this is the calculation for uh, the interest payment. I told you before that's 10% times the uh, value of the bonds, which is $500,000 bonds, and semi-annually would be half of the year. Okay? Now, there are cases where bonds sell above par value, and there are examples of where it sells below par value. Okay, let's take a look at these examples. So, issued at a discount. I'm just going to put discount. So here's an example of a journal entry to record the issuing of bonds at a discount. Let's say it's the $500,000 bonds, but currently the market will only pay $485,000. So this is what the, the buyer and the seller of the bonds agrees to. Okay? The buyer of the bonds, the people out in the public, and the corporation, the business. So we get cash in of 485. 
we record a discount on bond payable, I'm abbreviating there, the discount on the bond payable of 15,000, because they're $500,000 bonds, we just sold them at a discount, a reduced price, and then we're going to still credit our bonds payable, the full 500,000, okay? Remember, I told you these were, these bonds are gonna pay at 10%. This is what the indenture, the agreement says. We call this interest rate that's in the indenture, the contract rate, the contract rate, sometimes we call it the coupon rate, sometimes we call it the stated rate, sorry guys, but there are lots of names for this, or the nominal rate, okay? Contract, coupon, stated, nominal rate, those are, those are very common terms and they're all kind of used all the time, all right? So these are the contract rate, it's what's in the indenture. So the indenture may say that it's gonna pay interest at 10%, annually, semi-annually, whatever it is, okay? But the actual market rate for something like this might be different. The market rate is not necessarily this rate, this contract rate. If the market rate and this coupon or contract rate are the same, then the bond typically sells at par value very close, it's gonna sell a par value, okay? If, however, the market rate, I'm gonna write it right here, let's say the market rate right now is higher. Let's say the market rate right now for bond, similar bonds like this is 11%. Well, if the market rate's 11%, but this is only paying at 10%, no one's gonna invest in this, this at par value, okay? They're gonna to want to get, uh, something closer to 11%. So that's why they're gonna pay less for this bond. They're not gonna pay the full 500,000. They're gonna pay less to make up that difference, to make up that loss in interest. And in effect, they're not having a loss in interest anymore, okay? Because now they're paying less, and then whenever this matures, this bond matures, they're gonna get the full 500,000. So they're paying 485. They're gonna be getting interest payments of 25,000 every six months, that was our example and then at the end they will get $500,000 back, okay? That's if it's sold at a, at a discount. Now, if it's sold at a premium, premium, what happens is, maybe it's selling at $512,000. So that's what comes in, $512,000 cash, then we've got premium, on the bond payable. I'm sure you guys can see this is going to be 12,000. Okay? So the the public is willing to pay $512,000 for this $500,000 bond payable. Okay? And this is because the contract rate is higher than the market rate. So the market rate let's say is 9%. The current market conditions uh, risk and everything involved sets this at about 9%, okay? Our contract is it's going to be paying out 10%. Well, the corporation doesn't want to lose money in this deal, okay? They realize that this bond is a good bond at 10% and that people are going to, are going to be willing to pay more for this bond to get that kind of return, to get that, that kind of uh, semi-annual interest payment. So what they'll do is they'll sell it for more than the par value of this bond. The par value is 500, they're gonna sell it for 512. So it'll be a $12,000 premium on this bond, okay? Now, in future videos, I'm gonna go over how we handle this premium, and in my previous example, the discount, okay? There's called a straight line method, and there's effective interest method, okay? So when we're recording our interest um, expense every six months, in our example, uh, we're going to be eliminating part of this premium or eliminating part of the discount, okay? And it depends on which method you use. If you use the straight line method or the effective interest method, all right? That's a lot of information, a lot of good information. You're probably going to have to watch this video a couple times because it is confusing. Uh, but it does make sense. You just really have to think about it, all right? Thank you.